Good kitten internet. You'll notice this looks a little different compared to normal. Um, I'm continuing my little interlude. I should probably make myself look a little bit bigger. And yes, I finally have a properly working green screen setup, although you can still see some green fuzz in my beard. I think that's because of the crappy lighting levels in here. I should also actually look up because this is a really weird setup for me. So I'm currently capturing one of my monitors, or most of one of my monitors, I should say. Um, it's my second monitor that is currently, oh, about... 25 centimeters from the ceiling in this room because I'm actually doing this as a standing desk because I figured out that the lighting actually looked better while I was standing rather than sitting. Also, yay Vaporeon. Um, let's see, so between last time and this time I have done a little bit more research into things and I actually now know how to manipulate um, a lot. And I'll go over that as time goes on, but the main thing that I can manipulate now are each of the character's stats. And that's fully manipulate. I can drop it from one and all the way down to one in theory, all the way up to um, probably over 999, but I actually don't know what would happen if I did that. Also, you'll notice that the game quality is quite a bit crappier than normal. I'm running this using EPSXE because uh, my RetroArch setup can't actually play off of an actual DVD or CD in this case. And um, I'm using my actual CD because I need to. Technically, I could use a mounted image, but I need the actual file system in this case. So, tools for this. First tool that we are going to need is something called RetroArch. So, um, do, 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 or not RetroArch, uh, Brockman, I'm awake, I swear. So, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the incredibly stupid, overpowered tool known as Brockman, what this tool actually does is it monitors every single application running on your computer and just lists what it's doing. So, if you're trying to figure out a particular situation, yes, I'm okay with this. Procmon to the rescue. Unfortunately, it monitors every single program. You can see how much I've been running this. You've watched me launch it. You can see that this is just a huge amount of crap. So I don't want that much crap. Let's go ahead and stop the capture. I actually just want it to monitor EPSXE. Let's sort by process name. I can't sort, can I? Oh, um me full screen this really fast yeah you can see there's a lot of things that are going on but I actually don't care about any of this I only care about EPSXE oh if I can find it EPSXE does a lot of its things in RAM so it's really hard to actually find any of this you know what I can just type in the filter manually so let's see include that filter Filter. Okay. Yep, there we go. Okay. So, what I want to see, basically, is that I want it to actually load files. And I want to see what files it's loading. Right now it's idle, so all it's really doing is just constantly hitting the disk. In this case, I have drive D as my optical drive. And I'm going to clear out the events. And let's restore this. And then we're going to load up the berry cave. Because the thing is, is that I don't know exactly where it's going to hit the file. See, you can see the screensaver. Um, I don't know where exactly it's going to hit the file at, whether it loads in the uh, monster data when I enter in a zone, or if it loads in the monster data when I start an encounter. So I'm gonna first try the enter into a zone. And you're going to have to forgive me, I have some really dumb controls on EPSXE right now. I, I mean really dumb. Um, I can't even show you how dumb it is, but I'm using WAST for controls, so up, down, left, right, rather than my gamepad. I don't know why I didn't use my gamepad, but whatever. Um, so WAST is up, down, left, right, and then the actual up, down, left, right keys are triangle, uh, triangle, square, uh the x in circle sorry brain farted so this is really bizarre to control oh i forgot to actually start the capture up again hold on let me exit 
Okay. So I don't need this open anymore. Let's start the capture and walk back in. Again, my controls are dumb. So you'll see how it's saying, showing a certain number here. I can actually move this down a little bit. So I'm gonna stop the capture and see what we have. Um, I'm gonna move it down a little bit. Again, I can't capture the top part of my screen or the bottom part because my screen resolution for the, yeah, there we go. Um, the screen resolution for my monitor up above is 1920 by 1200 instead of 1920 by 10. 80. So I lop off basically 120 pixels top and bottom. So uh, let's see what we see. I'm really hoping it's not. Uh, yeah, it is. <sighs> Poop. I might not be able to capture this. Oh, continuing to capture. Oops, darn it. Stupid controls. I'm the one that did it to myself. All right, I'm gonna try to get into a battle and see if I can figure out the file. Otherwise, this is gonna be a real short trip. I'm thinking this may be a real short trip. My brilliant idea, no! Oh, trying to find where the hell a balloon is is not easy. All right, let's take a look to see what we have. Everything is direct pass through. <sighs> Well, dang it. So basically what direct pass through means is that EPS6E, the way it's working, is that it is literally just passing the entire device, or it's asking Windows, hey, give me the entire device. And then it's doing its own thing. It's not actually opening up discrete files like I was hoping it would so I can figure out where in the world the stupid balloon data is. <sighs> okay, so this isn't gonna work. Let's go ahead and stop that because EPSXE is kind of annoying. Um, we can close Procmon, and let's start looking at the directory structure of the game itself, so I can show you what I mean. And ignore this file is ready to be written to the disk. The, Windows always does this. It's dumb. Okay, so this is actually the file structure of Wild Arms. So there's five different folders along with a system identification file. If I remember right, the system ID file doesn't really have much of anything in it. Yeah, um, here. Speaking of, let's pop open our next program that we're going to be using, which is a program called VS Code. Um, VS Code, which stands for Visual Studio Code. Um, hold on, let me. All right, it's. Stop being annoying and popping up everything. So. Need to shrink this. VS Code is a uh, editor for lots of scripting, and it basically acts as a plain text editor as well, but does syntax highlighting for various uh, scripting languages. I use it all the time at work, and I've kind of grown to start using it everywhere. So, um, this is actually the contents of that system.cnf. It's literally telling it, hey, look, boot to here which this is the bootloader for the uh, Wild Arms game. And I actually don't know what TCP4 in Event 10 is. Uh, stack, this is just indicating where to start in memory. So um, there's various files. Uh, to give you an idea, STR, this is the opening and closing movies of Wild Arms. Uh, it's 134 meg of the disk total, which the disk itself is actually surprisingly full. It's 529 meg. So that re leaves it roughly 400 meg for everything else. Uh, speaking of the everything else, these are all the audio for Wild Arms. There's actually a lot of audio in Wild Arms. Um, yeah, the audio is 182 meg. The, the, the way PlayStation audio usually works, some games actually play like normal, what's called Red Book audio, or basically like you put the CD into your audio CD player and you can play tracks off of it. Um, the ones that don't do that typically use what's called XA audio. Uh, XA audio is a close cousin to MIDI, for those of you that are familiar with MIDI music. The main difference is that it includes the samples in it. So the way MIDI works is basically, the MIDI file itself is basically, I keep saying the word basically, this is not basic, this is complicated stuff. Um, 
Mini files are effectively the equivalent, uh, digital equivalent of sheet music. So it's telling a computer, play this note at this pitch and frequency from this instrument. That's all a MIDI file actually is. So older DOS games frequently just had MIDI files, and it would let the MIDI, um, the hardware used for interpreting MIDI, which on most people's computers was just their ordinary sound card, to go, okay, I need a piano here. And then the sound card goes, I know what a piano is. I have a font for that. It's actually called the sound font and it plays it. XA Audio, on the other hand, includes those sound fonts in there. So rather than it being, you need to play this instrument at this particular time, it's, you need to play this audio clip right here. So it's still a very similar format to MIDI, except that it's actually a lot nicer sounding, basically. And I keep saying basically, darn it, brain. Um, Amigas actually have a very similar audio format that they use, um, uh, mods. It's a very similar concept. You can have multiple instruments playing at once, which is why Mild Arms music sounds awesome. And, well, yeah. So, we know for a fact that these two folders do not have what we need. Because it can't. The sys folder may have what we need. I really don't know what in the world is in these files. Um, the bin folder may have what we need. Once more, I have no idea what's in these files. The EXE folder probably doesn't have what we need, and I'll show you why in a moment. So, this was that bootloader that we're talking about up here. Um, this is that path, that's fine. This is the opening sequence, so this is literally, you notice it's an EXE file, this doesn't play in a person's computer or anything. But, um, so we're gonna be opening up in VS Code, and the reason why we're using VS Code is I have a plugin called Hexdump installed. So this is actually opening it up in a hex editor, uh, and looking at what's effectively the binary of the file. Um, you'll notice that this is, remember the opening sequence of Wild Arms where it kind of comes up with the Sony Computer Entertainment of North America? Yeah, this is where this is coming from. This is effectively the coded version of the opening movie. Uh, or the coded version of not the opening movie, but like the opening logos. So like the logo for Sony Entertainment, the logo for, Logi? The logo for Media Vision, and so on. So there's nothing in here we really care about, and I know for a fact that we don't really care about this. So we can ignore this file completely. This Wild Arms executable we actually do care about, and I'll show you why in a moment, um, but it doesn't have what we need. Strangely enough, what this does have is all of the translations for everything in the game, which I was not expecting. I mean, there's other data here as well, but like, for instance, this is the item list. Like, these are one-use items, we've got the apples, bullet clip, secret sign, crest graph. There's not really any data in between here, it's just literally listing the items. Um, this is one of the files that's been modified for the translation. So, for instance, if I lo were to load up the, um, what you call it, the Japanese version of the game, you would actually, that I actually own, in fact, hold on a moment, um, I should actually just copy this locally temporarily. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and throw this in here. Sure. Yeah, this is just me downloading a complete collection of all uh, Sega CD games. Anyway, um, let's just go, go ahead and just copy everything in here. This isn't going to take very long. And I am going to load up my... This shouldn't have taken very long. Why is it taking that long? Huh, that's weird. Maybe I do have an issue with my CD. Anyway, I'll just show the Japanese version later. It's not that big of a deal. So, um, let's go back over to the drive that is currently failing to do anything because I hate optical media so much. I mean, yeah, it's better than floppy, but that's not saying much. Also, I just noticed that I'm clipping. Hold on, let me drop my microphone volume. You can see the mic right here, so I'm a little closer than normal. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, now I'm actually in green level, and then I will drop uh, game audio in a similar manner. There we go. Okay. So, um, what we actually care about is likely in either the sys folder or the bin folder. And the reasons why I know it's probably in there is that I've actually examined the contents of the Japanese version of the game. Which... 
Where is my Japanese version of the game? I thought it was on the desk. Is it underneath this? Part of the reason why I can never seem to find anything is that I am a very disorganized person. And the other part is that I have house cleaners that move things. Combine those two things together and I never find Jack or Squat. Nope, that's my Shining series Japanese games. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. So these are the two folders that I think we're going to have to care about. And the problem is that without being able to know what file is getting used, this is a needle in a haystack. It's possible that it's actually up in here somewhere. Um, so we can actually search for balloon. If I can type. And it won't find anything. The reason why is that it's actually not searching the hex dump. So what I need to do is copy this into something else. Yep, so you can see where balloon is at. Um, this is the monster list for reference. So balloon is in uh, 9C... A1, A0. So let's scroll down to 9C A0. Um, by the way, these are hex locations, for those of you that may not be familiar. 9C went too far. 9C A0. We have balloon. What I want is that. Balloon. And that is the hex code for balloon. It's just doing a quick translation from hex to string. There's once more, it's obvious that this is literally just a string. It doesn't actually have anything else in here. So yeah, this does not help us. What we need to do is find what is referencing this. And that becomes a lot harder to find. Oh, how am I going to do this? So, um, Hmm. Why is there any audio capture right now? There shouldn't be any audio coming from my computer. I'm just going to mute that. Okay. Um, because I don't have a game running right now. So, what we need to do is find out information. And some of these files are freaking huge. So... The one hint that we have as to where things are is that this is probably not an area that was translated. After all, what they're basically doing with this executable here is giving us a translation patch. Um, if you were to try to translate this into another language, this is the stuff that you'd be translating over here, which you can barely see my mouse cursor, sorry about that. Uh, this is the stuff that you'd be translating, not the raw data of the game. That makes things a lot easier. Which means that anything that's modified on February 14th, 1997 is the translation. Or things that changed from the Japanese version, er, from the American, yeah, no, from the Japanese version to the North American version. So, we can tell that some of these were modified for translation, and some weren't. So, the ones that weren't modified are much more likely to actually be the correct data, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. But, oh boy, is this a needle in a haystack. Oh boy. <sighs> okay. So it's either going to be in there or in... Nope, all of this is new. This is all February. So I'm pretty sure it is actually in one of these files. I'm going to cut this out for a bit and I'm going to start searching. Because, yeah, you really don't need to watch me search. Be back in a bit. And I'm back. So I was, I've was i been trying to think about how best to do this, and I figured out a way. So the very first of the monsters listed in the uh, translation section is a Gagasin. Gagasins we've encountered back at the um, sacred library that Cecilia starts at. Uh, so that was one of the first enemies that Cecilia encountered. Gagasin, as per the bestiary over here, is level 2 with 20 hit points and 0 MP. So in theory, we should be able to find, uh, so this is hit points, MP, uh, experience, and Gela. So 20, for reference for those that are unfamiliar with hex, 20 is the equivalent of 14 hex, which is good. Um, so what we're actually looking for is something that is 000014. The reason being is that some enemies in Wild Arms have tens of thousands of hit points, so they needed a lot of space to store the hit points. 
and shortly before that should be level, which would be 0, 2. So the CDFLR file, which this is going to take a bit, I actually found this. So level, hit points, magic points, which means that the rest of these are the stats in question. I think. It could be coincidence. It could definitely be coincidence. Um, because if I'm reading this correctly, it has one C for a stat somewhere. One C for reference for those of us that are maybe a little rusty on our hex like myself. Um, one C is 28. It could have 28 agility, but having zero attack and zero defense seems a little weird. So I don't know if this is what exactly we're looking for, but this string right here is what I want to find now. Um, and this string is in here 81 times. I know it's level two. I know it has one four hit points. It's entirely possible. It's even here twice in one line. Ah. Uh, Because I know it has, it's level 2, has 20 hit points and 0 MP. There is no way that this should be in here this often. <sighs> Dang it. I thought I had something here. Drat. And yeah, I went back to sitting, hence the chair that you can randomly see. Uh, uh, oh, I just realized I'm covering up the... Bestiary. There, now you can see it a little bit better. Um, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't know any other stats, but we do know that it drops 4 experience and 10 gela. So this, there should be a 0, 4 somewhere nearby, but probably not immediately after hit points and... Ah. Uh, what in the world would it be at? I don't know. This is annoying. So I don't suppose zero four. Yeah, no, there's nothing of that. So what I really need to do is find that sequence and the zero four somewhat nearby. Unfortunately, with 81 of these, it's going to be really hard for me to manually check this. Except that I could probably eliminate a lot of this because it looks very similar. I mean, like these, for instance. Each one of these are the exact same set of hex code. So, it's not really doing much for there. That Those can't be it. Because I'm not seeing the hit points anywhere near that string. I mean, it could also not be in this file. And trying to open the cden.bin, which is the other file that I thought it could be. So, for a reminder... No, this was the right one. Um, so, for a reminder... Um, these are the files that I thought it could be. This is the largest one that I could probably open. This, and I'm already bypassing a lot of warnings opening up a file this large. Opening up this might cause my computer to crawl to its knees, and I have a really powerful computer. Um, so it's possible it's in these. I'm just going to have them preemptively open in VS Code. Okay, and let's see if we can find this. Show me the hex dump. All right, it's going to be dumb. So let me let me just store this someplace temporarily. Yeah, so searching doesn't work very well in this. That's the problem. All right, it can't find any of that elsewhere. But can it find part of that elsewhere? I mean, that part, yes, but that doesn't help me. 16 spots, okay. That I can quickly glance through. We know their level has to be there somewhere nearby. Or 15 spots, because it counts the first line that I added in. I'm not seeing a 0, 2 very close, actually. Let's narrow things down a bit. That will also give MP. That's... Those two are probably not it. That's not it. And that's it. Okay, it's not in this file. Which is fine. 
since I don't know which file it's in, trial and error. I'm really hoping it's not in the huge file. I really hope it's not in the huge file. If it is, I'm going to have to use a different hex editor because, oops, copy, not cut. Oops. Paste that in. All right. It's found three. So this is a little more promising, but not much. This actually looks to be basically the same file. Did I accidentally copy and paste the wrong thing? I mean, they're very similar in file size. And unfortunately, this is all kind of gobbledygook. I can't read it. Oh, now you actually find the stupid lines of code. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think it might be in the huge files. Oh boy. So yeah, I had to change settings. Let me, let me see how far I can push this. That's a 120 meg file. And it crashed. Reopen, please. The nice part about VS Code is that it's pretty good about keeping things the way it should be. Um, yeah, I didn't save Jack or Squat. But the more important part is the line up here, so that's not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and hit settings. Go back to the hex dump settings. So I bumped this up from what's basically 5 megabytes to roughly 24 megabytes. I need to make this larger. This is probably a bad idea, but let's do it anyway, because you know what? Why not, right? Open VS Code, and then let's see this run. Um, yes, I really do want you to open this. And then you can see that I'm using a decent amount of CPU power just doing this. Admittedly, this could also be OBS running. Um, Nope, nope, it's VS Code. Wow. EPSXE is still running. Oh, that's weird. Go away. Yeah, luckily, as you can tell, I have a very powerful computer, but oh boy, is this using RAM. We're just dumping everything into RAM. Dang. Dang. Oh, and it crashed. <sighs> it's too big. Well, drat. I'm going to find a different hex editor. I'll be back. I don't want to, though. <sighs> drat. Hello once more. thought I would give a little bit of a progress update. So I was searching through the B-Serie to try to find some distinct value of hit points and MP with the idea that, okay, it should be that MP would be dis in the data file of wherever this comes from immediately after hit points. I'm hoping that, because otherwise this is practically impossible. Um, I know from looking at the file, which I'm not going to scroll through because there's spoilers in there for sure, uh, looking at the bestiary, the maximum amount of hit points is, is 65,538, or 65,536, sorry, um, which is the maximum value that you can display in a hexadecimal value. So 65,536, oops, 65,536. You'll notice that that in decimal is, or sorry, 535. There we go. Um, you'll notice in hexadecimal that is FFFF. That is the maximum number of um, nibbles or, yeah, it would be nibbles in this case, the maximum number of nibbles that you can use for hit points because obviously the programmers wouldn't have gone above that because that would be really hard to handle. So the highest hit point thing in Wild Arms has 65,535 hit points. By the way, it's not a boss. Uh, it's actually not a random enemy, but it's a relatively normal enemy, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Uh, you encounter it in the arena later on in the game. Um, so I know that it's only going to use those four nibbles. Uh, a nibble is half of a bite, by the way. Um, I get to use my computer science knowledge and my mathematics knowledge. This is awesome. You can tell in binary that it's basically just using four nibbles. That's what a nibble is. It's a segment of four bits. Um, four bits to a nibble, two nibbles to a byte, and so on. So I know that it's going to be a string of four characters. 
And what I was looking for was something unique like this. Uh, the owl face, assuming that the best area is accurate, I'm not exactly at the forest prison where I can find this at, has 2,000 hit points. So 2,000 would end up being... Ah, 07d0, because remember, we're dealing with four nibbles here. So it'll end up being 07d0, and then immediately afterward would be MP. MP, as far as I can tell, only uses two nibbles, because the most MP that I can see in anything in here is 255. So that would be... It should basically be stored like this, which you'll notice ends up being something like this. So it'll end up being 030D66, potentially. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's if everything was merged together. It's not going to be. So we have 07D0, and then we have immediately afterward 26. So what we are actually looking for, and this is going to be the string that we're searching for, is a hex value of 07, a hex value of D0, and a hex value of 26, all next to each other, with the hopes that they didn't separate hit points and MP because otherwise this is going to be impossible to find. Um, and I've actually found some things. So it's time for me to introduce you to Fred. Fred is a freeware hex editor. And I have found this sequence of characters in three different files. So um, just trying to move all of them over. Uh, really, Fred? Really? Uh, let's see. So it's not in the executable. There's the second one. Move this up here. And here's the third one. Dang it. Sorry, it's really hard for me to figure out where the mouse is because I'm seeing the mouse on two different monitors at once. So let's just go ahead and shrink some of this so it's easier to see, even though it's walls of text, to put it mildly. So yeah, these are the three files that are the potential candidates for us to think that this might be where the best area is actually stored in Wild Arms. Apologies for the clap. Um, these are the only files on the entire disk I can find that combination in it. I'm really hoping that they put the MP next to the HP, because otherwise, ah, oh, this is impossible at that point. Um, unfortunately, the cden.bin over here on the left is the super huge file. Um, and it is, this string is actually in here multiple times. Uh, yeah, I know this is all complete gobbledygook to most people, and that's fine. It's mostly gobbledygook to me even, and I actually know what I'm looking for. I should move these down so you can actually see the title bar so you'll know what files that i'm format uh, talking about once more d is the um obstacle drive and all three of these are in the bin folder so that gives me hope that the bin folder is actually where it needs to be or where it needs to be um where i need to look because i couldn't find that string in the executable at all um Speaking of the executable, let me bring that up really fast. So this is what the executable looks like. And the string does not exist. But what I haven't checked yet, does, does the first part of the string exist? No. Okay. So the hit points are definitely not in the executable. There's literally no point in the, uh, no section in the executable that has 2000 in it. So we don't need to worry about the executable at all. We know for a fact it's not in here. So I'm actually going to close that. Um, if it's next to hit point, if it's next to MP, it's in one of these three files. Um, so I'm going to start searching for some other strings to see if I can find similar results of HP and MP merged together. I'm certainly hoping so because otherwise I'm kind of up a creek and there's not much else that I can do to search the files for stats. All I'm trying to do is get the defense of the freaking balloon. Um, that's... A lot harder than you would think, apparently. So yeah. Yep, I'm going to stop this and continue searching now. Whee! More updates. Um, good news is I found what file it's in. So this cdstg.bin file, 
Um, I was searching through trying to find my weird one that I had described earlier, and I found it in here. It's one of the three files that I had found it. So I started looking at other creatures, and I've found almost every one of them that I've tried. So um, to give you an idea, these are the hex codes that I've tried so far. The one with question marks is the only one I couldn't find, which to me says that most likely it's not that it's not in there, it's that the best area that I'm using is inaccurate. Because, I mean, it's just some random person who threw it up on a website. Doesn't mean it's accurate. So this highlighted line here is a creature that we've seen before that actually has a somewhat unique set of hit points and MP, and that's the blue book. Um, this is in the sealed library, right where Cecilia started at. Uh, and this is our best bet at trying to find something. So let me show you how I'm doing this in Fred. So what I'm doing is that I'm searching for the binary hex value 00, zero binary hex, or not binary, it's byte hex value of 00, zero byte hex value of 0D, and byte hex value of 0C. So to give you an idea, so we've got 00, zero which is 0D, zero, zero which is 13, that's how many hit points it has, and 3C, which is 60, which is how much MP that it has. So in theory, this should actually be the the one, so to speak. And as you can tell, we can find it. The problem is we can keep finding it. Each one of these that I've found are all over the place, which means I don't know which of these are actually accurate. It could be that, like, if there was two sets, I would understand because you have to, uh, you have the analysis spell that's giving you its HP, MP, and what it's weak against. That would make sense that it would be in a separate area, but I'm finding each of these in a lot of different areas in the file. Each one of them have been in the file about the same number of times as this blue book. I mean, to be fair, this is way better than what I had before. Oh, and if you notice that um, Fred changes the search, so these the other reason why I was doing that is that these are two printable characters. So the hex value 3C is actually the left bracket. Left angle bracket, I mean. And the other one, which is um, 0D, is actually a backslash. So I am making progress. It's just that it's very slow in figuring this out. Uh, this is the reason why I'm cutting all of this out, by the way. Because, yeah, I'd be here. I'm, I've am i been here for hours. I actually need to eat lunch still, and I've been doing this for the past two hours. Probably just going to order myself some food. I mean, weather's nice, but... I want to continue doing this. Okay, be back in a bit. So, good news, bad news. Uh, the highlighted section over to my left, your uh, technically it's my right, but from your perspective to my left, that appears to be one creature. Um, this is the creature known as Necronomic. It's a palette swap of the blue book. And yes, Necronomic, not Necronomicon. They may have run out of characters, I don't know. Um, the problem is that's way too large of an area of code. It should be much smaller. Um, to give you an idea, it should probably be more like the, excuse me, uh, this. Which the fact that, so basically the very top part here, um, I need to double check my 0480. Uh, I'm not sure where that went. Sorry, this this was a lot of work to try to find. Um, one three seven eight. Here, so this right here is the HP and MP of a Necronomic, and um, that is accurate. And so what I ended up doing was I also started searching for other information that I have in the Necronomic. Uh, in this case, I have how much XP and Gela it drops, and that is way down here. Yes, yeah, soon. He wants to be up next to me. He was sleeping on my lap before uh, my nutrition of convenience arrived. Nutrition of convenience. Ooh, it's translucent. Um, yeah, that's way too much stuff in the middle, which means that either one, I don't actually have the right spot after all, even though this is the most likely candidate I've found to date. Or two, they encoded the graphics information in there as well. And that's certainly possible. And if that's the case, 
It's going to take me forever to find the stats. Um, there's still a couple of creatures I can't find for some reason. So I'm a little confused, but I can find most creatures. So I'm still assuming that this is a glitch in the, um, or not glitch, but mistakes in the bestiary that I'm looking at. Bestiary, bestiary, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to give more attention to the crying one that's down here. Right is in. Oh, his um, normal seating post is currently... Okay. Uh, his normal seating post is currently underneath my desk. Since I've decided to sit down for lunch, let me just move his seating post out. He'll be happier. There's too much stuff underneath my desk right now. I have my previous computer. There he is. See? And yeah, you can see where the green screen ends. Anyway, um, this is probably as much in investigation of this that I'm going to do for right now. And I'll get back to this later, after I finish my food of convenience. Right, Asin? All right. All right, now that I've had a bit more sustenance, I turned off the green screen, uh, the chroma key, I should say, specifically because, well, I'm not... It looks a little weird being transparent because my shadow kind of appears, but not really, and yeah, I need... I basically have to have something behind me. Anyway... Pardon me. So I wanted to show you how I'm going to start this testing. And again, I'm going to be cutting out a lot of it. And apologies for the um, burps that I'm having. Apparently the convenient food is not very healthy. Huh? Who would have guessed? Anyway, um, so I need to add window capture. And we know not the stupid game bar. Nobody cares about you, game bar. Memory card racks. There we go. All right, so this is the program that I'm using for, um, whatchamacallit, figuring out memory card situation. So memory card Rex allows you to edit memory cards. Um, it goes between a lot of the common formats for emulators and also ripping from PlayStation itself. Um, that's actually what this file here is for reference. Uh, you'll see on the screen behind, sorry, my... My brain has some issues with trying to figure out where the mouse cursor is when I see the mouse cursor on OBS. But um, you can see on here, this is actually the last save that we had from our game on my PS2. But um, that won't be used in this case. We're only hitting these 10. So 1 through 10, ignoring file 13, which correspond in the game to 1, 2, 10 here. Uh, you'll notice that they're all the same file. I named Rudy Testing Star, and this is basically the absolute earliest possible moment that I can enter the Berry Cave. Uh, it is actually less than seven minutes in. I just used the save from Cecilia, and that was four minutes in. So, whatever. Um, it's in the Berry Cave, so I should have the same encounter rate that I was having before. I remember that the first screen that I enter the or second screen, technically, that I enter the Berry Cave at has just balloons for encounters. So this should be fairly easy, and what I'll do, you'll notice below me, uh, you see a spreadsheet, and up at the top is the ATP. So right here, 20 ATP, it's actually off the side of your screen, uh, 20 is actually what Rudy has right now. So for an example, I haven't edited anything yet, I'm going to be showing you how I'm editing it. So if you look in here, Rudy currently has 20 ATP. Um, his luck is bad, unfortunately, so... And I don't have a way of modifying that luck, but I'll do luck testing some other time. Uh, I don't know if it's going to affect variants, but what I'm planning on doing is effectively logging on here. I'm just going with regular attacks. I'm going to ignore critical attacks entirely, but effectively just log on here damage. And I'm going to try to hit a decent number of encounters. I don't know how many I'm going to do yet because I have to do this 10 times. Um, probably 20 minimum would be my guess. Uh, don't know past that. So I'm going to do a healthy chunk of random encounters to try to get an idea as to what type of damage I'm looking at for each of these ATPs. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do 5 ATP without unequipping, because as you can see, um, the long knife adds 7 so what I'm going to end up having to do is unequip the weapon, and I'm going to unequip it on all of them. So 
actually I need to write on here. I did not make this clear. One of these is actually going to be no weapon. So this is 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And I guess I'm going to make another save. Uh, no, I can't make another save right now. Um, unfortunately, the save is in Surf Village because I don't have a choice. Uh, I didn't want to go all the way through this dungeon for the save point because I don't want Rudy to level up. Because I don't know if level has anything to do with it. Hence the reason why I'm testing this at level 1. Strangely enough, I found out that Rudy's level 1, but the others aren't. Interesting to me. Rudy's... I mean, Jack has more experience in the outside world. That makes sense. But Rudy... This isn't Rudy's first rodeo, and you find out more later on. So I don't know. Anyway, um, so what we end up doing in order to make this work, um, back over at Memory Card Racks, uh, we need to export each of these files. So uh, you can't even see my right click. That's annoying. Uh, basically, I'm right clicking the file and choosing export. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, you can't see it. Let me just over. So make this smaller. There. So I'm exporting this as a raw single save, which is a really weird format because this, yeah, there's not really a file extension. So I'm going to create this as a raw format. Um, we need to go to the wild arms folder. I'll do that here because that folder path is really obnoxious. <sighs> so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to export each of those files edit them, then re-import them. The reason why I created the files in advance, and this is the reason why I had issues before, is that apparently there's some type of hash with the um, game save slot and the identifier, uh, which you can see the identifier over on the right side. I thought it was just hexadecimal for the identifier, so wildarm one through F, but it's not. And I'm not entirely sure what it's doing on that. It loses the region, it loses the product code. There's got to be... It keeps the icon. It keeps the um, actual name of it. So I know it's not corrupted or anything, but for some reason it loses the rest. I don't know why. So I'm just going to make this easier on myself and just create each of these independently. And hopefully this won't be too bad. <laughs> uh, let's make a new folder called testing. And I'm going to save each one of these. Which is what I'm doing right now. And then I will hex edit them, which I will show you in a moment. So by the way, um, I never actually covered this, but I have a modded PS2. Uh, it's a software mod. So what that basically means is that there's no actual hardware modifications to my PS2 beyond the fact that I have a hard drive adapter, which most people wouldn't have. Um, but the more important thing is that I have, there's an exploit for the PS2 that long story short, it loads custom firmware onto it. And one of the things that that custom firmware does is enables what's called an FTP server. FTP stands for file transfer protocol. And I should really remember to do this mirror imaged. Um, what that means is that I can use my computer to enter the PS2 via FTP and allows me to transfer files back and forth, including from the memory card. So that's actually how I got most of my memory card stuff, was that I copied it from FTP. And by the way, the memory card reader on the PS2 is super slow. It is slower than dial-up. It is slower than a floppy disk. Uh, the peak transfer speed that I was getting was 8 kilobits per second. To give you an idea, that is over 6 times slower than dial-up it was brutally slow and i was actually wondering if it was still working but no that's the memory card reader is just really slow anyway i'm going to edit one of these now yeah that would make sense um let's go ahead and move this over here open up vs code again vs code's a little bit easier for me to use in my mind and let's go ahead and switch to desktop view. Yeah, a whole bunch of things around. 
And while I'm at it, let's go ahead and make myself transparent again. There we go. All right. So what we're doing in VS Code, and to be fair, we could keep using Fred instead of VS Code. It's not that big of a deal, but there's no real reason to use Fred. We're going to open up one of these. Open with code. Tell it, no, no, really show me the text dump. Are you kidding me? Show hex dump. Why did you all of a sudden stop working? Unsave. Compile location. Open with code. Show hex dump. There we go. Okay. So this is actually the hex dump of our save in Wild Arms. Uh, you will find that, see, for instance, here is the name of our character. It's testing asterisk. Mm, yeah, there's some Unicode fiddling around going on. So um, earlier on, I had found the location of Cecilia's stats. I haven't actually specifically searched for Rudy's yet. So that's going to be exciting. And also, what in the world did I do with Cecilia's stats? I thought I'd saved this as a screenshot. I'm not seeing it now. That's not good. Oh, there it is. Yep. So down at 1730. So we're going to scroll down to 1730. Um, outside of the names of some attacks, there's no spoilers in here. So 1730 and 24024. These right here are Cecilia's stats. So that is strength. Or that is, yeah, strength. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's vitality, agility, and sor or, sorry, sorcery and agility. I don't remember the exact order now. Um, so Rudy's stats are probably somewhere very close to here. And we have Rudy's stats because we can literally look at Wild Arms 1. So Rudy's stats. Uh, so he has 13, 12, 4, 8. So that's the set that we're going to be looking for, 13, 12, 4, 8. Now let's go ahead and switch back over to... You see what I mean by there's a little bit of an aura when I use the green screen? Switching back over to VS Code. Um, I just said what it was and I forgot. Um, 13, 12, 4, 8. So once more, uh, 13, for reference for those that don't memorize hex, is letter D. So we are looking for 13, 12, 4, 8 which would actually be, so each of these stats have two bytes associated with it. That's because the stat max is 999 and not like 255. So that is D, zero C, four. So what we're actually looking for should look something like this. This stat line right here. And it should be very close to where Cecilia's stats are. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's right here. No. Um, zero D, zero C. Why am I not seeing zero D? Unfortunately, the way I have to tilt my head up to look at this, I usually I use my top monitor as a heads up display like notifications or OBS is up there when I'm streaming, that type of thing. But uh, in this case, it's much easier for me to show that monitor than my primary monitor, which is down here. So yeah, um, just going to make this easier on myself. And let's search for 000D, 000C. There it is. So yeah, it's right after all of the names of things. So zero, so let's switch back to the hex dump. Roll up, yep, it's right here. So zero, zero, zero D, zero, zero, zero C, zero, 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 four, zero, 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 eight. So what I'm going to do for this is that I'm going to change two different stats. So switching back, we'll notice that we have 13, 12, four, eight. The two stats that I'm gonna be changing are strength and whatever res stands for again. I remember that I figured it out before, but I don't remember it now. 
So res, I'm going to actually, no, I don't need to change agility at all. So I'm just going to change strength. And the first set of tests I'm going to do is the weapon versus no weapon. That way I can glance and see, hey, look, there's no difference. Forget it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to change 0D to be 20. So 20, er, 20 in hexadecimal. I forgot to change this back. Uh, 20 in hexadecimal is 1, 4. So what we're going to do is this. Edit value under cursor, 1, 4. Enter. There we go. That's been changed. That's it. That's all we're doing. And then I'm going to do the same type of thing with each of the other files. I'm going to wait until after I've already done the testing for weapon versus no weapon, just because there's no real reason to continue this. Otherwise, anyway, I'm going to save. I'm also going to update my little spreadsheet thing. Uh, switch back over. Update my little spreadsheet. And this is actually... 0, 1, or 0, yes, that's fine. Oh, stop warning me. Okay, so um, the no weapon has been edited. Uh, the other one has is the current one, and I'm going to do those, and I will be back. Also, every time I switch, I swear that RetroArch just decides to go pause the screen for no reason. Anyway. Um, I'll be back after some testing. You don't need to see all of the testing. And I don't really have anything to talk about during it anyway. Be back. I'm not actually back yet. I just completely forgot to show the last part of this, which is re-importing the file. So I'm going back to file 01. And... Oh, darn it. Let me see if I can get it where you can actually see what I'm seeing. Uh, do, do, do. Multi-adapter compatibility. Now, do you see the right-click menus? No. Okay. But hold on. All right, I just switched it over to display capture. So now you should be able to see the right-click menu. Uh, it's actually off the bottom of the screen. One moment. I can fix that without having to fix too much else. Let's just go ahead and extend this down. There's nothing below it that I don't... And there's nothing on my screen that I don't care about. So uh, if you right click this, this is where I hit export before. Unfortunately, I actually have to remove the save then re-import in. And the reason why is that I can't import a save on top of a spot that already exists. I think that's just a fail save. So we remove the save. Yep, that's fine. Then import save. We've got our save that we modified. Did I forget to hit save? I totally forgot to hit save, didn't I? Save. Yep, there we go. Open. And you'll see that everything came back the way it was. And that's now been modified. And in theory, I don't know if I have to bounce RetroArch for this or not. So I'm going to find out really fast. Oh, I forgot to actually hit save. Darn it. This I'm going to have to back out. So give me a moment. Because I know it actually loads up the entire save then. So let's hit save. Right now, I will see if I can load without having to reload from RetroArch. I don't, I think I have to reload, but one way to find out. Load, testing star. I probably should have named them. I right, changed the names on them now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to exit, exit and relaunch RetroArch. Run! Go back through the opening again. Oh, I probably switched audio back over to myself, so you probably won't hear anything outside of through my microphone. My apologies in advance. Yep, it's coming out my microphone now because I was planning on um, setting this up for me doing it, and I want to hear the music because I like the music of the game. So. Um, when we hit load now, come on, I hate how long it takes to load. Do, 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 do. So this is just back at Surf Village, and in theory, yep, a strength is 20, ATP is 27. So what I'm going to do is unequip the knife. Ah, 
Darn it. And head out. Also, I probably should f fix it where I don't have to use the D-pad. Because I hate using D-pads for most things. I know it's blasphemy to certain groups of people, but I just prefer analog sticks for almost everything. So anyway, all I'm going to be doing is... Okay, I was trying to figure out if I can actually rig this up where I can use a um, turbo controller and just not have to pay attention. I can't, unfortunately. So, yep, and the balloon's going to... Oh, no, I'm actually still faster than a balloon sometimes. So, yep, 30. And then I write down... 30. Ooh, counterattack's handy, because I know that counterattacks are the same. 32. See? That's what I'm going to be doing. Over and over and over again. I got 4 XP from that. Wasn't I getting 1 before? I guess XP is based off of level, after all. Interesting. That makes things a lot harder for me to figure out. That might explain why I was having problems finding XP anywhere. Uh, yeah, I can do this about 10 times before having to reload. So, what I'm going to do is take a save state. There we go. And I will talk to you when I'm done with at least the weapon part. Then I might come back afterward. Bye! Alright, so I've only done a handful of tests with no weapon Rudy so far, and yes, I did actually remember to move it on the spreadsheet. And I've already found something really interesting. So, the red dot ones, you'll notice that they seem to be abnormally high. Uh, excuse me, specifically, they're, with one exception, they are all above the 30 to 32 damage that Rudy seems to be doing. The red dot ones are when I have two or more force. So, Sashanan, it looks like you're correct in that force actually does have an effect. So, I'm going to actually need to start controlling for force. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to re-edit the file. Um, let me just... No, back. <laughs> Sorry, convoluted. Um, pardon me. Woo, that looks weird. There we go. Um, I'm going to actually re-edit the file and do a couple of things with it. Um, one, let's show hex dump. That's not the current hex dump. Uh, close that. Show hex dump. Um, one, I'm going to give Rudy a lot, and I mean a lot more agility. So this is Rudy's power, his um, uh, vitality. Right, here's his agility. We're actually going to change this to, darn it, edit value, F8, enter. So I'm giving him a crap ton of agility. The reason why I'm doing that is that right now Rudy is so low on resilience, agility, whatever res is, again, I've already forgotten. Uh, he's so low on agility that basically the balloon randomly goes first, and that doesn't help. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was try to figure out how to change luck. I don't think I can without sleeping a bunch. So I think I'm going to go and sleep a bunch to make that work. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to worry too much about luck. Because as long as I go first, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, as long as I go first, it shouldn't matter. So I am going to save this. I said I'm going to save this. We'll find out if I saved it in a moment. Uh, let me re-import the save. Move save. Import save. Uh, that definitely did not save. I don't know what what you were talking about, computer. Computer, why are you not saving anything? Fine, we'll reopen this again. Maybe I should just be using Fred. <sighs> Go back through. I mean, I know what stat it, okay, it actually did remember that much. Save. 
saved. Claims it saved. Yep, it actually uploaded now. Or updated. Redo that. Load the game. Oh yeah, I need to switch back to game, so apologies for just looking into the void again. Uh, this is what I get for not... I, because I'm recording the screen down below, it gets weird. I'm recording huge chunks of everything right now. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yep, and his... That says 8. I forgot to save the memory card again. Dang it. And I need to restart RetroArch. Hi. Um, save. Relaunch RetroArch. This is so convoluted. I really wish I had a better way of doing this one. I mean, I can edit the uh, agility on everybody. That's not too big of a deal. Come on. And then I'm going to have to start testing again. This has basically been my entire day, by the way. I'm going to watch things at the same time, which is part of the reason why I was trying to not go through the, um, the yeah, anyway. So now Rudy's agility should, yeah, 248. Way better. Really? So now the testing should be a lot more precise because I can control for things now. Unfortunately, it means that I can only take the first attack each time because anything past the first attack is going to be um, corrupted by force levels. The first attack won't be. So that means this testing is going to be slower. Oh, actually, let's save state now. And let's get into some battles. And I will see you in a bit. Now, if I was really smart, I would actually be running this off of a different machine. Because whenever I click out of RetroArch, um, it pauses. That's the reason why you see the pause when I do that. Um. Oh crap. Does agility actually make a difference for Rudy? Am I seriously doing... Oh, it's because I have the weapon equipped. Derp. Okay. Ah. Dang it, brain. Load state. Unequip. Ah. Save state. There we go. Now this should be more like normal. I'm just... No brain, just no. I should be like Isun and just be taking a nap right now. Maybe I should set up a second camera that just points at Isun's spot. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so please tell me this is actually doing norm normal damage again. Thank you. So I'm gonna eliminate my existing 30. 30. That counterattack's fine because the um, force level up came after the attack was triggered. That much I do know that force level ups happen after the fact. And I'm going to keep doing this for a while. Let's see how consistent we get. Be back in a while. Alright, so just finished up the first two, which is 20 attack power with no weapon versus 20 attack power, including weapon. And as you can see over all the way on the right side of the screen, I have the results, and basically they're identical. Um... All of the variance has been from 29 to 33 damage. And the average is slightly higher with the weapon, but it's within the margin of error. So I'm not too concerned about that. I'm pretty certain they're all the same. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to um, test primarily not using a weapon. This next one will be with a weapon just because I made the edit early without thinking about it. And yeah... Um, so far variance seems to be pretty small, so I'm wondering if the reason why I saw so much variance before was because I wasn't controlling for the force. 
Uh, which in that case, this is starting to look like, well, there's four points of damage difference between the minimum and maximum. So, cat. <sighs> He's knocking over bottles. Um, so, I'm thinking that, hmm, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some more digging. So, I'll be back with some more information. Wow, this video is going to suck to edit. All right, so I finally have some results. I've been doing this for seven hours today. Oh, this is what happened. This is why I don't ever seem to have time. So I do crap like this all the time. Anyway, I've actually generally figured out how this works, and it's kind of surprising. So first, let's switch it over to the graph. Um, yeah. So on the bottom, over to that side, um, is the ATP stat. And those lines are basically what happens. So the minimum damage basically increases at a linear level. The maximum damage increases at a linear level. And they increase at different rates, which was a little surprising. But I saw that a little bit. So the randomness is numbers in between, basically. It's not a flat random number, and it's effectively based off of your damage. So switching back over to here, and then also... Setting my camera to not have the kind of ugly at this point um, transparency because the transparency is having some issues due to lighting levels changes. Um, let's go ahead and disable the filter really fast. There we go. Yeah, you can see the um, shadows behind me. It's because it's getting darker outside because I've been doing this for seven hours. Anyway, um, so long story short, let me get my spreadsheet back up. Um, there is a simple formula for how to do this. And, right, I, one moment. Sorry about that. I thought I had the um, formula captured, and apparently I didn't. So the formula is right below now. So that appears to be the formula for the minimum amount of damage. So it's your attack power minus, uh, against a balloon, I should specify this. So it's your attack power minus 10, that quantity divided by 5, then multiplied by either 9 or 9 to 11, that's where the randomness comes in, plus 11. Now, looking at this and the fact that I know that you definitely don't do that much damage to all enemies tells me that I'm guessing that the balloon's defense is actually 10. So it's effectively something like... Do, 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 pull back out notepad... So it's effectively like do, 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 do. need to expand that out. It is likely that. Um, yeah. So I think this is the actual formula that it's using to calculate for attacks. I noticed that Rudy's weapon actually does not use ATP entirely so i'm not sure what's going on with that i'm gonna do another video later on with um arms sorry not weapon but um rudy's gun does not do that damage i'm gonna do a separate video later on with both arms or with arm analysis magic analysis and um sword analysis but that below seems to be it also, editing the game does a lot of really weird things, if you're curious. Um, for an example, here's Rudy's current strength in ATP. Uh, so it turns out that these are signed numbers, not unsigned, like uh, what everything else is. So apparently Wild Arms is partially using signed and partially using unsigned. I'm really confused as to why. So, um, as a result... If I attack anything whatsoever, it does zero damage. It's actually kind of fun. Here, watch. I'm just going to run around and hit the first thing, because that's going to be quicker. Maybe. Berry Cave actually has a higher random encounter rate in my mind. But, um... So, watch. I'm attacking a balloon, and I have negative gobs of... Yep, just does zero. The interesting part is that my arm doesn't. Take a look. 
So this will just guarantee 100% chance of hitting. And it does 100-ish. There's no way the plus 10 ATP from that arm should be increasing it by anywhere near that much. Which tells me that there's got to be something else for how that's calculated. But we at least now know how balloon damage is calculated down below. And I'm pretty sure if you just replace the 10 with the balloon's def and the 5 with the def divided by 2, that's actually how most things in the game's damage is calculated. It's a guess. I don't know for sure. But this also explains the... Oh, I um, should also mention force level increases. Force level increases appear to just increase damage, not ATP. So I did some testing at some really low ATP values where I was basically doing one damage to everything. And if my force increased, I was still doing... Or, no. Yeah. If I was at ATP levels where increasing my force by one would increase my damage... It didn't increase it by as much as the ATP increase would be. Because, well, every 5 ATP increases it by 9 to 11 points of damage. Which means that increasing it by 5 ATP should have increased it by 9 to 11 points of damage, and it didn't. It increased it by, like, 2 or 3. So I'm not sure what's going on with the force levels either. That's probably going to have to be another video. Yeah. So I've unlocked the damage formula. Woohoo! I've also figured out how to edit save games. I figured out that not everything is stored little Indian and big it's stored big Indian instead. For those of you that are in computer science, you would or affiliate with computer science in some way, you might know what that means. It appears as though they're using both, which doesn't make sense to me. Um, as a result, I might not be able to find the stats of creatures because that's a 70 megabyte haystack to search through. And yeah, I'm, I'm giving up on that at least for now, mostly because I've spent all day dealing with this and I still need to go grocery shopping. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Hopefully my dive off the deep end hasn't been too bad. And the other stats should be nowhere near this complicated. Um, sorcery is the only other one that might get close to this. Um, what else? Oh, um, other things I've discovered about ATP. If you get low enough on ATP, as you've noticed from my negative numbers, you do zero damage. At some point, zero turns into one. So I'm thinking what the damage might actually be is if that formula down below ends up with a negative number, you do zero. And if it ends up with some type of fraction, you do one. Anything above that, it'll do the actual stated damage. And I've tested this formula out for um, five attack, which did one damage no matter what, 10 attack power, which did 11 damage no matter what, um, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and then 255, and 255 actually still matched my formula at least from a quick check, since there's such a large randomization number at that point, it's hard to be certain, but all the values went between my minimum and maximum. So yeah, I finally did it. And it's only taken me, I have no idea how long because I have to edit this video still. Oy. At least this hand's being cute. That's the important part. Right, this hand? Right. Oh, he started purring. Good night, Internet. I'll talk to you next time.